Okay, and uh, welcome everyone to our grammar classes. And today we'll be discussing the topic auxiliary verbs. So that's a quick introduction to what we'll be covering today. And uh, uh, they, these classes happen every Monday and Friday, 1.30 to 3 p.m. Indian Standard Time. And we'll be discussing grammar. We have already had few classes. Uh, those are already uploaded on our Facebook page. So anyone who is interested might as well go to our Facebook page and have a look at those videos. So today, today we are going to discuss this particular topic that is auxiliary verbs. And we have been uh, going through all the other uh, let's say chapters of uh, grammar or uh, as it's commonly known as parts of speech we've been going through the different parts of speech in grammar and we have covered quite a few important elements we have covered tenses the different uh, types of tenses uh, we have covered a few types of verbs we've covered articles nouns in fact we have also looked into pronouns and uh, I believe we have also covered adjectives so we have covered quite a few topics here and uh, as I said earlier people who have missed those topics who would like to you know look into those can also go ahead and watch pre-recorded videos uh, for those classes so Uh, for the students who are logged in through our uh, Google Meet channel, uh, are you able to hear me? I just need anyone to confirm here. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, great, great. And I'm just going back to check if I'm still live on Facebook. Great. So, I'm there on Facebook as well. So, let's begin with today's class okay so let's zoom in okay Okay, so <clears throat> auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs, again, another type of verb which uh, is very commonly used in English and most of us would already know this verb as helping verb. Okay, most of us would already know this. We would have been taught in school as helping verbs. Okay, now few of these helping verbs we have already discussed in our uh, classes in our previous classes and uh, one of them is one of the recent ones was have or has or had that particular verb and we realize that this particular verb is used whenever you're using uh, whenever we are using the perfect tense so whenever there is a perfect tense we generally use a variation of have or uh, another derivation of have that is had or has okay few other auxiliary verbs that we have also come across is do do or did we used it to emphasize on something so we used it to form the third part of the present tense the past tense Uh, do you speak English? I do speak English. To emphasize that I speak English, I put a do there. I do speak English. So that emphatic tense, that's where we came across this particular word that is do. Do, did and the family. Okay. 
another word that we have come across is be again i have discussed uh, be being a very important and a big family of words uh, it has got a number of words along with it uh, let's say is was let let me start with the beginning am i am i am a boy that am is a part of this b family okay belongs to b family b e family okay uh, similarly we have is 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 was okay uh, were all these variations all these derivatives are all part of the b family so three particular helping verbs we are already aware of these three okay okay so generally whenever we saw these verbs whenever we saw these helping verbs we understood that either the meaning of the sentence changes or the tense of the sentence changes okay now look at this i go if you put a helping verb i am you will not say i am go right if you have little bit exposure to english you would know that you would be saying a continuous form after this i am going if you have a verb after i am i am working i am dancing i am singing all these are verbs so generally it will change to a progressive form so something that was written in a simple tense i go changed to a progressive tense when i used a helping verb so i can say this that a helping verb changes the tense is helpful in changing the tense that's why we call it helping verbs they're helping us change either the tense or the meaning of the sentence or the clause so this example here it's changing the tense of the sentence okay a simple uh, a phrase in the simple tense simple present is changed to in progress present or continuous present or incomplete present however you want to call it okay now here again the next question uh, the next example you see here you sing <coughs> that's in the simplest form right you sing now when you use the word do this becomes a question so here this is not a question this is just a statement you sing that's just a statement but when you put the word do it changes from a statement to a question okay similarly here next she makes she makes we have used the word has to change this into a perfect tense or present perfect she makes changed into a present perfect so if somebody asks you what are these auxiliary verbs auxiliary verbs are words which help you change the meaning or the tense of a sentence or a clause so <clears throat> now let's look at few of these auxiliary verbs and uh, something that you need to understand is not all auxiliary verbs can be used in all different types of uh, tenses okay what i'm trying to say is whenever you hear the word is you know that something is going to happen in the present is does not work with past tense there is another word for that that's called was 
so all these helping verbs you would know that they fit only in some particular situations here we understood that is the word is fits only in the present tense there is no usage of is in the in the uh, past tense similarly was if a sentence has was that sentence you can understand is written in the past tense that's all end of the story okay it's that simple so again this understanding of which verb which helping verb is indicating to which tense is very important so many of us naturally have it that we understand okay whenever there is a sentence which has is in between it or is is used as a helping verb here then we can understand that the sentence is in the present tense similarly whenever we uh, we see was w a s was in a sentence we can understand that it is in the past tense okay so <coughs> helping verbs as i said earlier help us with understanding the tense of the sentence and also help us with uh, uh, sometimes changing the meaning of a sentence okay so here they have given us a table and in this table we have few of these helping verbs they have listed it out so let's just go through it okay so in the present tense the example that they have given us is is able to okay in the past tense it will become was able to in the past perfect no uh, sorry in the present perfect in the present perfect tense we have has been able to okay now you would ask me sir in the last class when we were learning present uh, continuous we were using this been uh let's say let me show you an example here the one that i have highlighted right now one second okay uh i'm just trying to make sure that both the screens come together one second one second just give me a minute here just want to make sure okay fine <laughs> okay so look at the sentence the tourists have been flying around the world this one the tourists have been flying okay this is something that we learnt in the last class when we were working with the perfect continuous tense so we used there was a subject the tourist then we used this have right we used have is because we have a plural subject the tourists okay the tourists have we added this word been and after that we changed the verb fly into its ing form flying so what was the formula that we learnt have or has plus been plus flying okay that's a formula we understood for present continuous similarly for past continuous it would become had been flying that's all had been flying 
here i want you to concentrate on this word been been okay now since you saw been here and then you saw this flying you understood that this was continuous it was an action which was going on but what if you get something like this he has been able to sing do you see any ing form there he has been able to sing there is no word ending with an ing so i cannot say that it's in the continuous tense right it's in the possibly in the simple he has been able to sing but there is a has okay if we have has we know we understand that the sentence will be in the perfect form so he has been able to sing that particular sentence is a sentence in the present perfect form and it is not a continuous tense it is in the simple tense the word been this word been here is used just to show that something is uh, he is able to do something or his ability to achieve something or to do something looking at this been do not get confused thinking that oh been was something that we used to see in the continuous tense no do not get confused like that the continuous tense to understand anything is in the continuous tense always look at this ing okay so just wanted to clear out a very common confusion among students here sir i had seen that been word so i thought it will be in a con uh, in the continuous tense so that's why i thought uh, you know it is it's having uh, it's got some other meaning or you know things things go wrong then so do not get wrong uh, do not uh, you know get confused this is not anywhere close to the continuous tense or the in progress tense this is something in the very simple <coughs> form okay so look at this example here has been supposed to he has been supposed to uh, work all day okay not a very good sentence but yeah uh, with respect to grammar that's okay <laughs> okay similarly we can use this word been along with uh, uh, had or has and this word able okay so understand this is another usage or another form here okay not a form i would i would not rather i would i would rather not say a form a different form but another usage okay in the future in the future tense will be able to that simple that something that we have used many a times and future perfect will have been again will have been this does not mean this is in the continuous tense and don't get confused with that okay so just wanted to share that particular piece of information here but don't forget we are learning auxiliary verbs okay so what you need to concentrate is on this one second i'm just putting my system on charge okay so as i was saying you should be concentrating on these words such as is was 
sorry so these are the words which you should be looking into when we are talking about auxiliary verbs or helping verbs okay okay again few more words which have this limitation or uh let's look at the example here can <coughs> okay now can is a word which can only be used in the present form nobody can use the word can in the past form okay it's that simple <coughs> so understand that certain auxiliary verbs can only be used in a particular tense that's what we understood by uh, for is is can only be used in the present tense was can only be used in the past tense okay similarly can the word can can only be used in the present tense another variation of can is has to again has is in the present tense in the past if you look into the past tense it will become could okay or you can also say it as was able to or had to in the perfect tense again we have variations of this has been able to had been able to all this so of course we have gone through this so i'm not wasting my time here let's move on let's look at may and must many people ask so what is the usage of may and what is the usage of might may in the present tense might in the past tense another variation uh that is more related to the usage of the word may and might okay let me tell you that uh this is something that angel had discussed and she uses this to make things clear for her students when they are speaking and uh, generally in the ielts speaking so may m a y okay what is the closest word that comes to your mind is mayday okay a uh, mayday 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 that's something that's you know very alarming when pilots when the aircrafts are crashing that's when they use the word mayday okay so may even if the word is just a three letter word it's a very powerful word okay now might let's look at the next word might might even though it's a very mighty it's huge right the exam the understanding is might mighty or huge but it's a very weak word when you are using these two words may may is a very powerful word okay and what it means is the probability of something occurring or changing or happening is very high might the same thing but the probability is very low is so understand this like this and it's quite easy to learn it and not go wrong okay so mayday mayday 
very big thing powerful word right everything in an airport will change just by uh, you know if you just say this word right so mayday a very powerful word okay and that's why may is used or you can understand that's the reason may is used to show something that is very powerful and something that has a very high probability might even though it shows itself as very mighty big huge is a very weak word shows the probability of something occurring is very low okay so that's the usage something out of grammar something different uh, from our course but that's something that you guys should you know no okay so coming back <coughs> other than that particular usage of may and might may and might are also used to indicate the tense that is may is used to show the present tense might is used to show the past tense okay must must is something where you uh, you should do something or there is a it is being asked not politely but with a level of authority that you should do something you must sit and study for ielts if you want to score a band 7 or higher you you must improve your english grammar <clears throat> if you would like to you know score a band 7 or higher okay then <clears throat> there are few more variations here in the past tense you can simply use it as had to then you would have seen such sentences had had to okay now again uh there are different usages of this again uh not something that i would like to touch and go right now or in the you know basic classes i would not like to touch this particular element okay but yes we would be discussing such sentences and the usage of such uh, sentences in uh, possibly in the next uh, series okay so this first particular series where we we are discussing all the parts of the speech where we are discussing all these uh, different elements the basic set of grammar okay i would not be discussing this topic here because i think this needs its own uh, you know uh, half an hour at least <laughs> to we need to spend on this particular topic itself so i'll skip this right now okay and uh, we will come back to this once we start with the advanced series so in the basic series i'm not going to discuss this all right so another few words ought to again a very good word but i do not see many people use it okay ought to again uh, you're obliged to do something okay somebody has helped you some some time in the past and uh, you know a third person is reminding you that you know look your friend had helped you uh, when you were sick and today you ought to help him back that's the usage of this word ought to okay so you are obliged to help somebody or uh, to do something or to to take some action that's when you use the word ought to should again we should uh, we should not speak while in class we should maintain some discipline such usages are there again there is a degree to all of this we have that particular thing coming up so i'll show you that similarly we have want need okay all these words are there as auxiliary verbs okay <clears throat> few sentences i can go i want to go okay now here these verbs that you are seeing go okay 
this is a bare infinitive verb this verb is called a bare infinitive and this verb to go this is called a uh, to infinitive if you'd like to know more about infinitives what i would suggest here is that you go to our website that is asklearning.in here here's the website asklearning.in and you should go to this particular section that's called grammar and vocabulary here the very first uh, blog that you would see is about infinite verbs and infinitives so if you go here you would understand the difference between one second yes the difference between this go and to go what's the difference between them and what do we mean by infinitive okay so of course if there is something that is infinitive which refers to something infinite there is also something called finite verb so do this as a homework or as something on your own go through the blog read through it and try and understand what is a finite verb and what is an infinitive okay it's a very interesting read and i'm sure it would be helpful in your attempt to improve your grammar so i can go and <coughs> i want to go again what we are trying to learn here is the usage of auxiliary verbs i can i want you must must have need ought should can all these are auxiliary verbs we have seen them we have just uh, we have looked at few variations of how they are used okay so let's look at some exercises and let's work our way out of it okay so there are two exercises here yes before i run through the exercise i would like you all to look at this as well as i said <coughs> uh, let me bring this yes okay so the sentences that you see here all these sentences let me highlight this first okay now all these sentences are moving from a lowest degree of obligation okay what do i mean by obligation uh, the feeling or the compulsion that you feel within yourself to do something okay uh, let me uh, give you a very good example of this okay before the corona virus had spread or before the pandemic <clears throat> most of us had a very regular life we would get up somewhere you know uh, at a, at a very re reasonable time and uh, we would look uh, we would start our day we would start working we would possibly have a long commute to our office we might have to you know work uh, there for some hours and by the end of the day we are back so most people would be having a would would have had a uh a routine like this okay but after the corona virus stuck all of us were locked inside our homes and uh, this this routine might have also changed okay now when you were logged you were not obliged to even brush your teeth but when you were working there was some obligation that you should brush your teeth and at least only then step out but now since you are locked inside your house like an animal for months and months or let's say for days for weeks okay some of us might have even you know skipped one or two days in between while when when we would have very honestly forgotten how to uh, forgotten to brush or you know even look at the toothbrush or to the, to the toothpaste okay now that's being very honest and that's uh, uh, trying to you know explain you the meaning of the word obligation okay obligation is not something that you are supposed to do but it's a feeling of of uh, of wanting to do something back or providing something back okay now it can be out of many other many reasons 
okay it it might be because you pity the person it might be because you want to help genuinely help somebody or it might be because of some social structure that we have okay so understand obligation is the degree of trying to help something or help someone okay so now that you understand the word obligation all these sentences that you see here they move from a very low obligation level to a very high level of obligation so the first sentence has the least obligation or you can say it's your choice that's what the first sentence means we may return the book it's up to you you want to return it return it you don't want to return it up to you man you keep it okay okay next we can return the book again you're not as free as when you use the word may here an ability is also being shown okay when you say we can return the book you're also showing that you are able to return the book it is not only talking about if you should return the book it's not only looking at returning the book but can is also showing your ability to return the book it's saying that you can get up from your cha chair go to the let's say the library and give the book back submit the book back submit the book okay so this ability of understanding where i'm supposed to use a may and where i'm supposed to use a can is understood by one one particular factor that is may does not include any level of ability it is not talking about your ability it is just talking about some facts here and there that's all what are the fa what are the facts it's my choice to return the book or the books it's my choice okay i'm not talking about if i want to do it or can i do it will i do it nothing like that i'm just saying it's my choice if i want to return the book okay when i say we can return the book or i can return the book i am more pointing out towards my ability to return the book of course i can return the book okay now whenever you are showing your ability your level of obligation increases a little bit when you when you used may your obligation was not that much but when you used can it raised a bit it raised by a small percentage okay okay so third one we are able to return the books now you can change this all of this we are able to is similar to the scan c a n so even if you say we can return the books or we or or you use this we are able to return the books no difference okay can is being explained here by using these three words are able to okay again it's showing the ability able ability okay same thing i told you here for can so let's move on to the next one <clears throat> we need to return the books when you say this there is the level of obligation increases we need to return the books so here as you can see here slight obligation not the least obligation or little obligation but the level of obligation increases we ought to return the books next one next one when you say we ought to 
there is no rule that says you you are supposed to there is nothing like that but it would be something good okay it's uh, possibly as i said earlier i, I had given you an example for ought to when you uh, when somebody had helped you and now it is your turn to help him back that's when to show that feeling you would use this ought to i ought to help him out okay so <coughs> again we, nobody is forcing you or you're not obliged that much but again as it says it would be a very good idea to return the books next one we are supposed to return the books okay when you say we are supposed to the level of obligation increases so there is somebody saying or there is somewhere it is a rule that you should return the books or there will be consequences if you do not there will be consequences that's what you are showing here by using the word we are supposed to return the books okay okay the next one we must return the book we must return the book take it more like a duty that you have we must uh protect our motherland that's a duty that you have towards your motherland nobody will say you ought to protect your motherland no people will rather say you must protect your motherland or your country you must protect your children right so the level of obligation is very high when you use the word must similarly you have a very high obligation or the level of obligation is very high when you use the word have okay so the words have an order of obligation and most of you should know this order and should be using this particular order whenever you you know are in such slightly different situations so again we may least obligation we can shows a bit of ability as well as a slightly higher obligation are able to same thing need to your obligation has increased little bit more some things are dependent on you returning the books we ought to not only some things are dependent in a good perspective or in a in a in a more humane perspective you should help somebody out you 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 should or uh, you, uh, you ought to help somebody out you ought to return the books you ought to uh, uh, help your parents okay nobody is asking you to do it compulsorily okay and nobody is asking you it is your wish to do it but somebody is suggesting you that this is you know probably the best course of action that you should take so you ought to should some level of compulsion is coming there is being added there okay you should return the books that's the most right thing to do that's when i would i would use you should you should not have killed him okay <clears throat> you are supposed to or we are supposed to return the books again the obligation is much higher than should okay uh somewhere it's like a rule that you are supposed to return the book or something bad will happen to you something adverse will happen you would see something some adverse result if you do not do this that's where you would use generally you can use both should or supposed to they can be interchangeably used here must and have very powerful okay uh it it shows that you have a level of uh, duty or not doing this 
is completely going to be your fault. Not following this instruction, which comes after the word must, shows that you're completely irresponsible and you know you should have done this. That's why they use the word must to show that level of compulsion. Similarly, we have the word have. Okay, we have to. Okay, so uh, let's, as I said, let's look at a few of the uh, exercises here and close this chapter. Okay, so the sentence here is Serena buys a new car. So we have to do two things here. The first sentence that you'll make, you have to use the word can. And the second sentence that you make, you have to use the word want to. So let me help you out here. Serena can buy a new car. That's the first sentence. The next sentence will be Serena wants to wants w a n t s wants to buy a new car okay so that's the first one i hope that would be enough for you to answer the rest so anyone would like to answer the second one we borrow some money we can borrow some money we can borrow some money okay and the next one we want to borrow some money. We want to borrow some money. Okay, good. So, third one. I leave at 10 o'clock. I can leave at 10 o'clock. Yes. I can leave at 10 o'clock. The next would be, I want to leave at 10 o'clock. Okay. And let's look at the fourth one. The boys have cereal for breakfast. The boys can have cereal for breakfast. Okay. The next one would be the boys want to have cereal for breakfast. So a very simple exercise. My sister is home by 6. Hmm. I would like to hear this one. My sister is home by 6. You have to use can. My, My sis sister can mm -hmm. home by 6 p.m. Can be. Can. Okay. okay. My sister can be home by 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, try the next one also. Uh, try the the want to that one my sister want, to be. want or wants wants, wants to be wants home to. by 6 p.m. okay uh, they can travel to California right uh, tell me the other one they wants, to travel. wants no want, want. want why did this change happen when we say when we used my sister we said my sister wants to why how many sisters are there my sister one sister that's why the verb want became wants okay here the next sentence they wants is wrong they want w a n t want there is no s why there is no s with want is because they is already plural in the earlier case my sister was a singular so the verb had the s with it okay my sister wants they want okay so it's just 
understand this logic here, this change. So whenever you have a singular subject, these verbs like want, uh, all, all uh, want, uh, do, all these, all these verbs will change into, will have a S. Okay, my sister plays, my sister sings, my sister wants, my sister dances. In every case, you are putting a S. Why? Because my sister, that's a singular there. But if you change that my sister to they, they sings. No, they sing, they dance, they play, they want, they work. You are not putting any S there because the subject is now plural. So it is all depending on what the subject. If the subject is singular, the verb will use the S. If the subject is in itself plural, the verb does not need to have an S. Okay, That is a simple uh, understanding there. Okay, So they can travel to California, they want to travel to California. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gutierrez carried the groceries for her. Put can. Mr. Gutierrez can. Can carry. 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 Oh. Why carry? How many are there? One. One person is there. So, carry. Okay. Can carry the groceries for her. If you want to use want, how will you say? Wants to carry. Wants to carry. The groceries for her. The groceries for her. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what do they want us to do here is remove the auxiliary in each sentence and rewrite the sentence appropriately. So, first thing you need to understand what what one uh, uh, which one is the auxiliary verb here. This is the auxiliary verb, right? Here, this is the auxiliary verb. We have to remove these verbs. Okay, so you ought to stay in bed all day. Okay, now you have to remove this ought. Okay, now when you are removing this ought, you cannot keep this to also, it will also go along with this ought. Okay, so if you remove both these words ought to, what is left behind? You stay in bed all day. That's all. Can you say you must stay in bed all day? No, you cannot use that. Can you use is, are, should? No, all these are helping verbs. So I have to remove any helping or auxiliary verb. That's what the instruction says. Okay. So your sentence will become you stay in bed all day. Okay. So that's how we need to do, uh, do this. Okay. I should try hard. I try hard. I try hard. Okay. My brother may be a little late. Hmm. My brother little late. Right? Chalo. Use the word is. Try and use is. My brother is a little late. My brother is a little late. Okay. Fourth one, we need to find a room for the night. Need, we have to remove this. So, what will it become? We find a room for the night. Now, this exercise is kind of, I would say, uh, kind of a stupid exercise. Not that, uh, not, not that great. So, I am just running through it. Don't worry, okay. Uh, <coughs> Let us look at the next one. 
Miss Brown is able to get out of bed today. Okay, you have to remove. Uh, we have to remove this, so this will also go. So Miss Brown, get or gets? Gets. Gets. Why gets? Thanks. This is singular. Okay. Okay. Good. Ramon, 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 uh, not Ramon. Ramon must remain at home today. So, must will change. Ramon remains at home today. Uh, I couldn't hear any one of you. Once again, repeat it. Ramon remains at home today. Very good. Ramon remains at home today. So now you have understood where to put that S, where not to put that S. Good. Okay. Uh, they have to learn to behave well. Behave well. They learn to behave well. Very good. Okay. So the next one is a question. So let's skip that. Look at the ninth one. His girlfriend wants to sell her condo. You have to remove this wants. If you are removing wants, this two will also go. His girlfriend sell or sells? Sells. Sells. Sells her condo. Condo is an apartment. A small apartment. Okay. That's what it's uh, the the full form is condominium okay so uh, condo is a short form of that okay and uh, that uh, people who are uh, looking forward to settle down in canada us uh, even in uk this particular word is much in usage okay so anything uh, uh, and uh, it's generally uh, one bedroom apartment or a a studio apartment something something of that sort okay so that's condo minimum short form is condo okay uh, tenth one <clears throat> tenth one is again a question so let's skip that okay great so again this is something that we have already discussed the usage of may can need to ought to should supposed to must have have to the from the least obligation to the highest obligation okay we have one uh, we have discussed this already so let's jump into the next exercise okay so we have to rewrite the following sentences with the auxiliary shown in the parenthesis. These, this. So we have to use this element within this sentence. Okay. <coughs> and uh, we have to make sure that the tense, tense of the sentence does not change. We have to maintain the tense of the sentence. So Mr. Weston drives to Arizona. So drives okay when you say drives that's in the present past which tense present tense, present tense right now here the auxiliary that they are wa they want us to use is have to okay so have have let's look at have have cannot can it be used with mr weston mr weston have to no no no. It will become into has, right? Yeah. So, Mr. Weston, Weston has to finish the sentence. Tell me the rest of it. Has to I have highlighted it here. Drive to Arizona. Mr. Weston have will become has has to drive to 
آریزونا. Okay. Let's look at the next one. We borrowed some tools from him. You have to add need to. What's the subject? V. So what? How can we do this? We need to borrow some tools from him. We need to borrow. So if you say we need to borrow, this will become present. We need to borrow. But this sentence, is this in the present or is this in the past? Past. Past. Okay. So what will you change in our sentence? Let me write it here so that you guys can, you know. And the thing is, one second. I'm making it a bit smaller so that I can put everything together. Okay, so now I'll write the answers here in the, this small blue space. So <coughs> you guys can also go through it. Okay. So the sentence is: We borrowed some tools from him. Okay, so that's the sentence. One second. Okay, we borrowed some tools from him. Now, borrowed, ed. This shows that this is in the past. Okay. Now, maintaining this past tense, we have to write this sentence and we have to use this need to. Okay. So, let's begin. We, that's the subject. Need <coughs> to borrow some tools from him. Okay. That's the first thing that comes into our head. This is what I'm going to write. Okay. But when we write this or when we say this, this has become present. Okay. Now we need to change this into past. So my question is, will you put the ED here or will you put the ED here? Any one of these places you can put this ED. Needed. We needed to. Very good. We needed to borrow some tools from him that's all now it's in the past yes yes so this is also in the past the one that we changed is also in the past okay this is called maintaining the tense this is what they wanted you to do be sure to keep the same tense maintain the tense okay that's what we have done here okay we have maintained the tense and we kept it in the past okay so just be careful about that nothing not not a, not rocket science something just you need to be careful with so let's look at the next one i want i you have to use want to and you have to change the sentence i left for mexico on the 10th of may i left hmm I left for Mexico, something that's already being done, right? So what will this become? And what? Wanted to, wanted to yes, wanted. Leave. Yes, I wanted to leave Mexico, and the rest is the same. Okay. Left. Left was showing you the past here right but when i added want the indication of past moved to the word want that became more important here leave uh, uh, left which was showing us the past left is the word that was showing us the past left was changed to its base form or the infinitive infinitive form that is to leave 
okay that's why i said Re go through that article infinitives and finite verbs that would help you understand a uh, few more uh, uh, few basic elements of verbs okay so <coughs> past is now shown by wanted earlier past was shown by the word left now since wanted is showing the past we will not write left but rather we would use the base form or the infinitive form to leave or leave however you want to uh, look at it okay that's how it changes okay so let's look at the second uh, next one fourth one miss mac adam will help you you have to use be able to this one okay mac adam will be able to help you mac uh, miss mac adam will be able to help you good that's a simple one good job okay jolene repairs the car you have to use this ought to jolene ought to repair the car that's the sentence okay jolene ought to repair the car okay okay now this this is a question so let's skip that aaron worked on saturday you have to use this supposed to so aaron is the subject aaron b will change to which form was supposed to work on saturday the ed from work will be removed and where is it shown was was b has changed to was okay okay good so good you are getting a hang of it <coughs> she orders the cake today hmm you have to use must she she must order the cake today order the cake today okay okay good so you guys would have all realized one thing whenever we are using these helping verbs it's removing this s right all of you would have realized this she yes. must order the cake today uh jolene repairs the car when we used ought to jolene ought to it became repair repair the car right so that's another thing that we understood that whenever you are using a helping verb it removes this s from the verb order order was the verb was the kriya the action okay it makes it into its simplest form or its infinitive form bare infinitive or two infinitive form okay so moving on our neighbors will paint their house our neighbors what will you say our neighbors will want to paint their house very good our neighbors will want to paint their house good okay so uh, i think that's the last yes so with that we have understood auxiliary verbs or helping verbs and we have also understood the degree of auxiliary verbs or helping verbs we have understood few things uh on how to use it we have done some exercises on it okay and uh, let me see if i have time to
cover this next exercise as well passive voice okay uh, let's it's kind of uh, extensive topic and uh, might take time for us to you know move in and i would also like to cover the subjunctive mood along with the passive uh, voice so let's close the class for today it's a bit earlier than usual but let's close the class for today we have just discussed one topic in today's class and that is auxiliary verbs or helping verbs okay we have discussed that in quite uh, quite a bit detail and uh, we have done few exercises on it and the next topic that's going to come come up on uh, friday on this friday would be the use of passive voice we will do some exercises uh, let me give you a brief understanding there are two types of voices one is active voice and one is passive voice okay at the base level of grammar we we have two levels of voice one is active voice and one is passive voice active voice is something that uh, is used more in a conversation passive voice is something that is used more in the written uh, structure so people who are planning to write an IELTS exam you all know that you are supposed to write an essay an IELTS essay now that needs to be in the passive structure okay any academic essay any general essay uh, needs to be in a passive voice so of course it becomes important for us to learn the passive voice to make to be able to write in the passive voice okay uh, not that important for speaking because speaking is mostly active voice okay so understand this difference and uh, wait for our next class that will be on friday uh, same time okay we say 1 30 but it might just take us 5 10 minutes to start the live video on facebook uh, kindly bear with us and this is a continuous class which will uh, which uh, you know right now is covering the basic part of grammar and this will grow into a very advanced level so keep tuning in keep uh, you know uh, bookmark our page or follow our page so that you are reminded whenever there is a grammar class going on and moreover you can also view all these classes uh, as a recording on our page ask learning facebook.com slash ask learning so that's all for our today. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you.